Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at linear equations with constant coefficients. And this is basically for us section 4.3. And this is going to be talking about constant coefficient linear equations like a n nth derivative of y plus a n minus 1 n minus first derivative of y plus dot 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 a1 y prime plus a0 y equals some function, we'll call it g of x. Um, actually, in this section, we're only going to be talking about homogeneous equations, so g of x is going to be 0. So this is the type of equation that we're going to be discussing. All where, we should say where, all a n, a n minus 1, a1, a0 are all our constants. So that's unlike uh, our general form where they're functions of x. So normally these can be these coefficients can be functions of x. But in this section, we're going to just assume that they are all constants, so just numbers, basically. So what we do to solve this type of equation, to solve this type of equation, we guess a solution. Then, if we have all the conditions satisfied from the first uh, theory chapter, theory section, we can know the solution is unique. So once we guess the right solution, we'll know that it is the solution, and we don't really have to worry about anything. So um, what we're going to guess is we're going to guess that y is equal to e to the mt. We're going to guess that it's an exponential function because how can I have a function in all its derivatives in the same equation and equal zero? Well, that can only happen most likely if there's some kind of exponential because I need the same function to appear, but I need to maybe subtract a certain amount and add a certain amount so that it all adds up to zero. So I basically just need the same function to keep showing up, which is an exponential function. So if we guess this as our um, solution, then what would y prime be? y prime would be m e to the mt y double prime be equal to m squared e to the mt, etc. And the nth derivative would be m to the n e to the mt. Now, sub all those in. So sub these into the differential equation. So we get a n times m to the nth power e to the m t plus a n minus 1 m to the n minus first power e to the m t plus dot 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 a 1 m e to the m t plus a 0 e to the m t equals 0. And now I basically just substituted all those derivatives and the function itself into the differential equation. And what I see is a common term here, e to the mt. e to the mt can be factored out. So I'm going to take e to the mt out entirely. And that leaves me with a n m to the nth power plus a n minus 1 m to the n minus first power plus dot 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 a 1 m plus a 0 all that equals 0 now what do we know so we know e to the m t is never 0 for all t because exponential function either grows or decays it's never equal to 0 so it doesn't matter. 
what exponential function it is, we know it's never going to be zero. There's a horizontal asymptote at zero. So what we can say is, since e to the mt is never zero, that would imply that what's in parentheses has to be zero. So a n m to the n plus a n minus one m to the n minus one plus dot 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 a one m plus a zero equals zero. So this is called the auxiliary equation or the characteristic equation. So this is called characteristic equation. or auxiliary equation. So right now we're going to just focus on second order equations. So right now, so focus on second order equations. So let's focus on second order equations. Well, that would be a2m squared plus a1m plus a0 equals 0. Or instead of using a0, a1, a2, a we could just say am squared plus bm plus c equals 0 coming from a differential equation, maybe something like ay double prime plus by prime plus cy equals zero. So maybe this was our differential equation, our second order differential equation. And then from there we get the characteristic equation am squared plus bm plus c equals zero. So this would be our characteristic equation for a second order equation right here. So now, it's really just a polynomial in M, and that's what it's always going to be no matter what the order is. So it's just a polynomial in M. Well, it's a quadratic for the second order. So M, 1 and 2, would be equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we can always find the roots of this t characteristic equation um, if it's quadratic or if it's linear or a second order equation. So these are called the characteristic uh, roots. So there are three things that could happen. So three possibilities. Three possibilities. The first thing that could happen is we could have two distinct real roots. Two distinct real roots. m1 not equal to m2 and b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. The second thing that could happen is we could have a repeated root. So repeated real roots. That would be m1 equals m2 equals, we just call it m, that would be when b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And then we could have two complex conjugate roots. m1 and 2 equals a, well, I should say alpha plus or minus beta i. And that would be when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So depending on what happens under that radical, what the coefficients are basically of our differential equation determines what type of solution we will have. So if we have two distinct real roots, so two distinct 
real roots then two linearly independent solutions are y1 equals e to the m1 t and y2 equals e to the m2 t and the homogeneous solution y sub h equals c1 e to the m1 t plus c2 e to the m2 t so example work one example really quickly and we'll finish up for for now so example solve the IVP initial value problem and it is y double prime plus 5y prime plus 4y equals 0 y of 0 equals 1 y prime of 0 equals negative 2 so first thing First, find characteristic equation or characteristic roots. So basically, we get m squared plus 5m plus 4 equals 0. You just take the coefficients directly from here. From the difference equation. Substitute them in your characteristic equation. That's all you have to do. Now you have a polynomial. What we can do is we can try to factor, I think, Let's see 4 and 1 maybe, m plus 1, m plus 4 equals 0, m equals negative 1, m equals negative 4. Call it m1, m2. So then, the general solution is yh equals c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the negative 4t. So then we need to just satisfy our initial condition. So y of 0 equals 1. Well, that would be c1 plus c2. Because when I plug in t equals 0, uh, both of those exponentials become 1. Now, what's y prime? So y h prime would be negative c1 e to the negative t minus 4 c2 e to the negative 4 t, taking the derivative. And then y prime of 0 is supposed to be negative 2, and set that equal to negative c1 minus 4 c2. So now I've got two equations, two unknowns. Solve the linear system. So, got two equations, c1 plus c2 equals 1, negative c1 minus 4c2 equals negative 2. I'm just going to add those two equations together. I'll get negative 3c2 equals negative 1. So that would tell me c2 is 1 third. And then the first equation would tell me that c1 would be 2 thirds. So then the general solution is yh equals uh, 2 thirds e to the negative t plus 1 third e to the negative 4t. And that would be our general solution for this second order homogeneous differential equation. So we'll stop there. Next time we'll come back and we'll do uh, some repeated roots, complex roots, and higher order equations.